Hi there, we have a measurement video this time on the volume of a prism. So the volume of a prism equals the area times the height. Sounds easy, but we have to really closely define area and height for prisms. They take on slightly different meanings when we're working with prisms. The area of a prism that we use to find the volume must be a cross-sectional area. It must be the area of a cross-section. Now a cross-section is an end shape. You look for a shape on the end of a prism that's actually uh, one that stays the same uh, in nature all the way through to the other end of the solid. I'll show you what I mean by that in a moment. And the height of a prism, usually we think of height as being from the ground up, a vertical type of height. In prism language, it's the distance between the end shapes, and it's often not vertical. It's often how far back the end shape goes until it gets to the other end. And I'll show you what I mean about that too. It sounds tricky, but we have to have a slightly uh, careful uh, definition of area and height when we're working with prisms. Let's see what I mean. Let's have a look at what a cross-sectional area is. There's two shapes here. We've got a triangular prism and a trapezoidal prism. You'll see the end shape there is a triangle. Now as I click through this, you'll see the triangle keep the shape all the way through to the other end. It's a pretty cool little animation. It's so good I want to do it again here. We had that uh, end shape being a triangle and it keeps its shape repeating the direction of that shape all the way through to the other end. So we'd call that triangle the cross-sectional shape of that triangular prism. Now let's have a look at the version for a trapezoid, uh, a, tra a trapezium. Uh, there's a trapezium in green at the front there and as that shape moves through you can see it keeps the same shape right to the other end. Okay, so that uh, in that bottom case, that trapezoidal prism, we'd call it the cross-sectional end shape is a trapezium. And that's important because we need to find the area of that end shape as part of our volume calculations. Okay, now let's illustrate the height idea. The height of... Uh, height talked about in a prism is actually the distance between the two end shapes. You, I've made the two end shapes in that triangular prism blue. but So the height we're measuring is actually the distance between the end shapes. The distance between. So it's often not a vertical height, but how far back you have to go to get to the other end. Okay, it's kind of measured this direction or this direction. Okay, you've got to be careful with uh, your terminology when you're talking about prisms here. So the height can be measured there, or it can be measured up here, or even on that back bit there, that back uh, lower edge. So that's the distance between the end shapes. That's the height we talk about in a prism. And we've got a trapezium at the front and a trapezium at the back. So you, can you see that this H here is uh, representing the distance between the two green trapeziums. So we could measure it there, or there, or at the back there, or even way back over here that I wasn't prepared to write in. Uh, the back edge, back bottom edge there. They're all representing the distance between the end shapes, or how far back the tra trapezium has to go to get to the other end. So that's the H we're talking about in the volume of a prism. We have to be careful with those definitions. So the volume of a prism, area times height. Volume equals A times H if we wanted to just uh, do it in letters. Now there's two main types of questions. One fairly easy where you get given the area of the cross section already in the question and all you have to do is multiply that area by the height, how far back it goes, to find the volume. So let's have a look. The been very generous to us here. They've given us an area of that uh, blue triangular bit, the end shape, the cross-sectional shape, uh, of 25 meters squared. And they've said, okay, it goes back. Uh, the height of the prism, in this case, is 10 meters. So we'll use our formula. They've given us an area of 25, very generous. And the height, as I said just before, height of the prism, the distance between the two end shapes here, in this case, is 10. So we have 250 as our 
a number answer and we're working in meters but with volume we need to have cubic units for volume we use cubic units so instead of meters we have meters cubed so we took the area here that they gave us and we put it into our formula here we took the height it's a funny sort of way of measuring height but we put that in there for the 10 so uh, area and height that's all we need we need to just multiply them together and we're done to be careful with our units of course so this is a rectangular prism here but if we know um, the volume uh, the sorry the area of that uh, blue bit the end there we just need to multiply that by our height or how far back it goes to get to the other end so our volume here is uh, the area that they gave us 40 times by how far back it goes the height of 9 Four nines are 36, so, so 360 is our number. We're looking to use cubic units here, and so we have cubic millimeters, meters, millimeters cubed. So on this one, it might be a bit hard to see, but I could kind of help you here. That blue shape is repeated back there. So a rectangular prism here is it's, it's, it is a normal type of prism. So the volume is just the area of the face times by how far back it goes. It's nice when they give us the area already. And here's our trapezoidal prism, not easy to say. But they've given us that green shaded area at the front. And how far back it goes, 42. And all we need to do is use our formula. Volume equals area, which they gave us as 926, times by the height. Now I got through saying before that the height is really the distance between the front face and the back end. So that distance is 42 centimeters. We multiply that into our calculators, 38,892. And we'll be using, looking to use cubic units, where instead of centimeters, cubic centimeters, centimeters cubed for volume. OK, so it's nice when they give us the area. All we have to do is multiply it by height. And remember, height is how far back that shape goes in a prism. All right, now, when we're not given the area, we have to do a bit more work, I'm afraid. We must calculate the area of that cross-section, and then we multiply it by the height like we just did. So we have to do a bit of work sometimes when they don't give us the area. They can give us some, some dimensions. We have to figure out what area formula we're going to be using. So for that triangle, remember the area of a triangle was half the base times the height. We have to work out that area first, and then put that area into the, our volume calculations as our second step. So step one is to find the area of the end shape. In this case, it's half the base times the height. You can see the base of our triangle is 8 and our height is 6. This is the normal definition of the word height in this case. Um, so half of 8 times 6, you can see that'll give us the area of the triangle on the end. And then that's 24 millimeters squared. Notice we use square units because we're using areas. Okay. Now, we'll take that area, a bit like our previous examples. Now we have an area to work with. We'll pop that into our volume formula underneath the area of 24 and our height is this 9 here that's how far back it goes remember in prism language our height is often at the distance between the ends there and not often sometimes not uh, vertical measurement 216 on the calculator we're looking to use cubic units can you see which cubic units we're going to be using because we were using millimeters in the question we'll have cubic millimeters for our answer we had to do a bit more work there. In the previous examples they gave us this uh, area here, we had to figure it out according to what uh, shape we've got. We had to use the right formula and do a bit of work there. Now, this area here came across and went in there, and that 9 was our height. Okay, this is a tough one because uh, what shape have we got on the front? A trapezium. Do you remember the area formula for a trapezium? Because we have to find that first. I know we're trying to find volume equals area times height, but they haven't given us, given us the area. They've given us lots of dimensions and we have to figure it out. So the area of a trapezium, half the height, A plus B. Our height is here. Our A is the top parallel line on our trapezium. So that'll be a 10. And our B is the bottom parallel line. Uh, length, that's 16 there, so that'll be our B down there. 
So let's find this green area here. We have half of 7, because our height was 7. A was 10 up the top there, and B was 16. So we're just putting those numbers in from the, from the green shape to find the area of the trapezium. And we can calculate that to be 91 centimeters squared. So that's our area. Now that area there, that can now be our A in our volume. So that's the area of our cross-sectional shape. Our height is how far back it goes. So our volume is our 91. Our height is our 12 here. That's how far back the shape goes, or the distance between the two end shapes. That's our definition of height for prisms. If we calculate that out, 1,092 uh, cubic units we're looking for. Instead of centimetres, it'll be centimetres cubed because it's a volume. We need to use cubic units. Boy, we had to do a fair amount of work for that. Sure, we found volume in the end, but we had to go through finding the area of the cross-sectional shape, in this case a trapezium, and then we had to use that in our volume uh, formula, along with h for height in prism language, the distance between the ends. Pretty tricky. So, volume of a prism, area times height, but you'll remember we had to be careful of our definition of area. It has to be a cross-sectional area, has to be the area of a shape that uh, repeats all the way to the other end. And our height, we had a slightly different definition of height too. It's not very often do you uh, measure height um, horizontally, but uh, we, we do in prisms. It's the distance between the two end shapes. It's how far back that shape goes until it gets to the far end. So that's tricky. Not easy to have different definitions of words we use in other topics, but still. Volume of prism, area times height, if we're careful with those definitions. When we're given the area of the cross-section, the question's pretty quick, because all we have to do is multiply by the height to find that volume. When we're not given an area, we have to work it out, that cross-sectional area, and then multiply by the height to find the volume. Okay, check that video out, uh, a video out a couple of times because uh, there's a lot to do there, a lot to think about. I uh, hope that helps. Uh, watch it again and get some practice. You might like to pause the video and uh, try and do some questions and then play the video and see if your solutions match my solutions. Okay, all the best with that. Thanks. Bye. See you next time. And don't forget, of course, peterblakemaths.com.